Listen to Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. There was no warning, no presentment of impending disaster. The papers headlined the cliché of another impasse at the United Nations. Radio commentators announced a new gangland murder, the firing of a football coach. There was not the slightest hint that the entire civilized world might be in terrible danger. And then a telephone started to ring in a certain New York City apartment. Hello? Ken, better get down to the bureau right away. What's up, Chief? Formula H. I'll be right there. Sure there's no mistake, Chief? Not a chance, Ken. It's Formula H, all right. The key to the most destructive weapon ever conceived by man. And a set of the microfilm is missing. When was the loss discovered? I got a call from Los Alamos 20 minutes ago. Any idea who? Take your choice, Ken. Sir John Saunders of England, Charles Gomar of France, Aline Najda of Belgium. Good Lord. Yeah. Three of the world's greatest atomic scientists. All of them cleared to work with our top men. And all of them had access to those plans. What's been done about them? Washington just reported on a personal security search. And? No trace of the film. No, there wouldn't be. Well, what the devil are we going to do about it? We can't let those plans get out of the States. Why, Ken, if they fall into the wrong hands, the whole world could go up in smoke. Chief, weren't the three of them about to leave this country for a scientific convention in Paris? That's right. They were all set to take off at midnight from Washington in a chartered plane, but don't worry about that. We'll cancel the flight and hold them in custody. Why? Why? For Pete's sake, Ken. One of them's obviously using that trip as an excuse to get out of the country with those plans. That's why I think we should let him go. What? Look, Chief. It's a hundred to one that Formula H is on its way out of the States right now. None of the three has the plans on him. So what are you going to accomplish by holding them in custody? Well, I don't know, but... But we just can't let them skip the country. Why not? If I go along. What have you got in mind, Ken? They are not leaving Washington until midnight. That gives us plenty of time to make arrangements for me to take over as co-pilot on the flight. Co-pilot? I'll have until we land at Shannon Island to come up with something. Maybe learn which one it is or get some hint as to what's happening to that microfilm. Oh, but you haven't anything to go on, Ken. Nothing to work with. Got any other ideas, Chief? All right, let's go. Hi there, Mac. You looking for somebody? Yeah. Captain Bill Allen. Have I found him? Well, you couldn't have done it better with radar, pal. You must be thirsting the new call. That's right. Hope we don't mind the last minute switch. Oh, brother, there's been nothing but switches on this flight. We're going. We're canceled. We're going again. I've even filed two flight plans. One for Shannon and one for the Savoy Bar. No, Thurston, you don't bother me a bit. Well, thanks, Allen. This our ship? Yep. Fuel check, cleared and ready to go as soon as our three VIPs get here. Just the three of them going along? That's right. Mm -hmm. Two of us and the steward will make a total of six. We'll be flying light, high, and handsome. That's why I file nonstop. Right... Hey, looky there. Seems as if the brain tries showing up. Hey, Thurston, I thought we were carrying electronic graybeards. Who's that streamlined jet jar? She must be one of them, Alan. Dr. Aline Nashbell, Belgium. Well, don't tell me she's got all that and brains, too. Wow, we'll be flying the beam tonight. Are you all set to go, Captain? Well, just let them get aboard, sir, and we'll be off. Good. The plane's all ready, so if you'll all get aboard, Dr. Najda. But of course. Here, let me help you with that bag, Miss Najda. Well, thank you, Captain. Well, think nothing of it, ma'am, nothing at all. 
Oh, you button up after we're all aboard, will you, Thurston? I'll see our passengers and make comfort. Sure. <laughs> passengers, did he say? That's a relief. For a moment, I thought Dr. Nash was the only one traveling tonight. See you aboard, Mr. Thurston. Are you, you are certain that this plane is capable of making the journey, Monsieur Thurston? It does not seem very large or very strong. No need to be concerned, Professor Gomar. We'll make it easily. Ah, uh, perhaps, perhaps. Still, it is such a long voyage and over water so much of the way. A boat would be so much safer, so much more... Oh, well, it is too late for that now, huh? Yes, sir? Well, as you say, the die is now cast. We, oui, it has been cast. Everything all right, Ken. Okay, here, Chief, what about you? Oh, they've been under constant surveillance. I'll guarantee not one of them is carrying the plans aboard. What about Alan? He's been checked. Not a thing on record against him. You're going on a wild goose chase, Ken. You haven't got a prayer of turning anything up. Why don't I take them all into custody before it's too late? If I can't turn anything up, it's already too late, Chief. I'll let you know how I come out. See you later. So long, Ken. NC-6X-943 to tower, ready for takeoff. Over. Tower, NC-6X-943, the runway's yours. Let her rip. Over and out. How do you make the altitude, Thurston? 10,001. Of course. Zero, seven, zero degrees. Well, check and triple check. It's all a known how, as the man says. Nothing to do but relax from now on in. Yeah. Suppose I go out, check on the passengers, and have the steward rustle up some coffee. Yeah, you do that, Thurston. Only don't you get lost on the way. I'm reserving hand-holding privileges with that beautiful hunk of atomic fission for yours truly. I little know, Alan. You just do that, Thurston. You just do that. Nice takeoff, Mr. Thurston. If the rest of the trip is as pleasant, I'd be more than satisfied. Thanks, Sir John. We'll try to keep you that way. Uh, by the way, do you happen to have the time? It's um, 12.35. Uh, thank you. Everything all right, Dr. Najda? Oh, it is indeed, Mr. Thurston, with but one exception. Oh, what's that? Well, traveling by airplane always stimulates me. And as I do not feel the least bit sleepy, I... I am certain that some coffee could do me no harm. You will have it, Doctor. I'm going back to light a fire under the steward now. Monsieur Thurston. Monsieur Thurston, some attention, please. What's the trouble, Professor Goma? That Captain Allen, he did not do as I wished. I told him I wanted my briefcase here on the seat beside me, and he has put it up there, where I cannot easily reach it. Well, that's a simple matter, Professor. Here. Yeah, merci, monsieur. I have important notes, you understand. If anything should happen to the plane, perhaps I might be able to save them. I wouldn't worry about it, Professor. You'll be in Paris before you know it. Hello, Pagan. Oh, am I ever glad to see you, Mr. X. I've been sitting back here cooped up in this coop waiting for you to show. What's going on here, anyways? Didn't the chief tell you? And nobody tells me nothing. All I know is that I was working busy in my Uncle Ahmed's elite haberdashery emporium, and this bureau agent walks in right in the middle of a 400-spade hand with double pinnacle besides. Then you didn't see the chief? Uh, he took me out of this airplane. I didn't see nobody. And he told me to stay in here until I heard from you. Yeah, well, uh, but believe me, I would have walked right off this thing if I didn't figure you wanted my invaluable services. Yeah. And don't forget, we were playing double in space. Pagan, hmm? somebody on board this plane has got some missing microfilm. All knows where it is. I've got to find it before we reach Ireland, and you're going to help me. Oh, sure. Now, what do you want me to do? Hang around the passengers, drop a few remarks about scientific secrets, H-bombs, microfilm. Let them know you've got a few friends behind the Iron Curtain. <laughs> the sense. Uh, then what? That's all. That's all? It'll be enough to start putting the pressure on. I'll handle the rest of it. Wait a minute. Something you wanted, Sir John? Uh, I, uh, as a matter of fact, there is, Mr. Thurston. That, uh, that coffee you spoke about. Now, the steward will have it ready in a minute. Anything else? Uh, uh, yes. Captain Allen asked me to get you. He'd like to see you up forward. Thanks for your trouble, Sir John. Perfectly all right, Mr. Thurston. 
perfectly all right. You wanted to see me, Alan? Not nearly as much as I want to see Miss Nuclear Fishing in 1951 and 2 and 3. Why don't you take over here and I'll take over there? Fair enough, Bill. Oh, and you might bend your ears around that radio headset. Some friend of yours in Washington wants to yakety-yak with you for a while. Oh, thanks. Yeah, now you just keep your Geiger counters handy, chillin'. Daddy's gonna be radioactive tonight. NC6X943 Thurston. Calling Washington 37. NC6X 943 Thurston. Calling Washington 37. Come in, please. Hello, Ken. All clear? All clear, Chief. Talk up. Ken, you're in trouble. There's something awfully wrong aboard that plane. That's not news, Chief. Well, this is. The Washington police found a dead man a couple of hours ago. Murdered. They just got a positive identification on him. What about it? He was an airplane pilot with the name of Bill Allen. <laughs> Come here. May I have a word with you in private, Mr. Thurston? Of course, sir, Dr. Nasha. Please come in. Thank you. I wanted to speak with you about the steward, Mr. Thurston. Zell Schmidt, what about him? He was talking to Charles Gomara a little while ago, using your name quite frequently. If I am not mistaken, he was linking it with a certain letter of the alphabet. Is that supposed to mean something to me? I would not know, Mr. Thurston. Well, then why tell me about it? Perhaps, perhaps it is because I am a woman as well as a scientist. And like most women, my heart yearns for peace. Thank you for your time, Mr. Thurston. I hope I have not wasted it for you. Come in here, you idiot, and close that door. Oh, sure. Happy to oblige any old aeroplane pilot any old time. <laughs> now, I had a visit from Dr. Najla a little while ago, Pagan. She told me you went up your old tricks again. Well, once a salesman, always leave him laughing, you know. <laughs> well, here you are, Mr. X. Did you learn anything out there? <laughs> Did I learn anything? Believe me, I learned plenty. You know, that smells so good, I think I'll have a cup myself. Come on, let's have it. Well, don't breathe the door so, Mr. X, but... Those three jokers out there, they're all spies. What? That's right. I heard them telling that Captain Allen all about it. All three of them were in that atom bomb place down in New Mexico, and you know nobody but spies can get in there. Oh, fuck. Uh, well, that stays this good old job, huh, Mr. X? Here's mud in your eyes. Drop that cup, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Hey, what's the big idea knocking that coffee out of my hand? I'm dying for a drink of that stuff. You almost were dying for a fact. Huh? Yeah. Smell this coffee. So what? It, it smells like coffee and maybe burnt nuts of some kind? Yeah. Bitter almonds. But I didn't put any nuts in that coffee. No, but one of our friends out there put something in it. Poison. <laughs> We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. The blood plasma reserved for the fighting men in Korea is exhausted. Unaccountably, donations have decreased sharply in the last few months. Now, this condition must not continue. The lives of our loved ones must not be lost needlessly. Our soldiers in Korea are giving their blood for their buddies. Can we do less? Call your local headquarters of the American Red Cross now. Make an appointment this week to give just a pint of your blood to save a life. And now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zeldschmidt. It is known simply as Formula H, and yet it holds the key to the most powerful, the most terrifying weapon ever conceived by man. 
and a microfilm set of the plans is suddenly discovered to be missing. Ken Thurston, acting as co-pilot, is aboard a transatlantic plane chartered by three international atomic scientists, all under equal suspicion of having stolen the missing plans. And now, in the pilot's compartment, Ken has just become aware of an attempt to kill him with poison coffee. Poison? That's right, Pedro. But, but who, but why? Oh, but what? Take your pick. There are four to choose from. Four? Our pilot. He's a phony. <laughs> the real Bill Allen was found a couple of hours ago by the Washington police. Murdered. Oh, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Sure, why not? We can, we can... Oh, oh no. Yeah. But, but we're stuck up here in the middle of nothing with somebody who wants to bump us out. What do we do, Mr. Thurston? What do we do? I don't think we'll have much to say about it. Huh? Listen, listen to those engines. The ship's beginning to ice up. What are you talking about, ice? There's plenty of in here. Take a look at those wings. The ice is piling up fast. Another 30 minutes of that and we'll spin down out of control. We will. Oh, ice missing plants, poison coffee. That puts us right between the devil. Oh, oh gee. Well, well, pals, it sounds like our putt-putts are playing knock-knock. What gives out there, ice? That's right. I'm building up fast. Well, that lovely whistle bait of lean Najda ain't the only de-icer we got aboard. I switched on the de-icers half an hour ago. Something's wrong with them. They're not working. Well, now, that's a revolting thought. You got any suggestions? There's an old deserted landing field this side of Gander, Newfoundland. The ferrying command used it during the war. And there's just a prayer we can make it. Well, fair enough. I'll let our paying passengers in on the scoop, then come back and help you set it down. I got a hunch, though, that somebody aboard this flying chemistry class ain't gonna like the change of plans. You know, Ellen, or whatever your name is, I was just thinking the same thing. Flying thirsty. Bill Allen couldn't have done better himself. I don't know about Bill Allen, but I think you could have put it on. <laughs> well, that friend of yours back in Washington tipped you off to the switch, huh? That's right. Well? Well, now, nah, you can't chew out a guy for helping out a pal in a jam. What kind of jam? Too much elbow bending. When this flight was canceled the first time, he made for the Savoy Bar. He wasn't in no fitting condition when it was scheduled again, so I took over. It won't wash. Allen's dead. Murdered. Are you leveling, Thurston? Yeah. Well, then I'll tell you what. Let's take care of the pay and freight while I think it over. Weather ought to clear in a couple of hours, and it could be I'll have something... something mighty interesting to talk over with you by then. That some disaster would overtake us upon this trip. Did I not say so, Misery? Did I not? Oh, it's not as bad as all that, Goma. Can't you look upon it as an adventurer's luck? I do not care for adventure in a nice bound wilderness, Sir John. Only in a safe passage back to Paris. What is to be done now, Monsieur Thurston? I ask of you. Well, as soon as the steward and Captain Allen secure the plane, we'll head for that shelter hut at the end of the runway. We can light a fire and be comfortable in there until the weather clears. Now, those are pleasing words, Mr. Thurston. What is more inviting than a roaring fire and good company while a storm rages outside? Yes, very well, very well. If we have no alternative, let us be about it then. Eline and I will go with him, Thurston. We'll have the fire going by the time you get there. Thanks, Sir John. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, do you have the time? Hmm? Yeah, it's, uh, 7.15. Uh, thank you. One of the penalties of exacting scientific research seems to be a nervous stomach. And pills have to be taken on schedule. <laughs> Come along, Aline, my dear. All right. See you later, Thurston. Yeah. Well, I got the sandwiches and the hot drinks, Mr. X. A tea, that is. So let's take a powder for that ramshack over there. Where's Alan? I haven't seen him. I guess he's still on board the airplane somewhere. Ah, but who cares? I think we'd better care, Pagan. Come on. 
Hey, it's cold on that board of that plane. It'll be a lot colder here if he takes off without us. Huh? Now, why would he do that? We still haven't found the missing plans. And they're more than worth a gamble with a little ice. Mr. X, he's not here. He's got to be. Let's try the office. <gasps> Mr. X. Yes. Oh. But who? How? This time the coffee gag worked, Pega. Poison. <laughs> Alan poisoned? But it does not make any sense, Mr. Thurston. It makes plenty of sense to one of you here, Dr. Najda. I'm not certain that I understand, Thurston. That man wasn't Bill Allen. He was helping one of you get some stolen microfilm out of the United States. What kind of nonsense is this, Monsieur Thurston? We are scientists of international repute. It is ridiculous to accuse one of us of stealing Formula H. I didn't know I'd mentioned what formula was missing. Uh, well, perhaps you did not. But this kind of accusation, the inquiry and searching back in Washington, I but drew the natural conclusion. Yeah. You know, Thurston, I'm almost convinced that Gomar is right. If this pilot of ours was a Confederate and stolen microfilm, why would he have been killed? There can only be one answer, Sir John, to prevent him from telling what he knows. Is that guesswork, Dr. Nauser? Or knowledge? Why can't we term it... Fundamental deduction, Mr. Thurston. Maybe we would. If it wasn't for this. Now, what in the world would that be? A charm from a lady's bracelet, Sir John. I found it on the floor of the plane. Under the pilot's body. Under... Uh, well, I presume you have some explanation for that, Aline, my dear. Well, of course. The simple truth. And that is? Well, I noticed that charm was missing from my bracelet hours ago. I must have lost it aboard the plane and someone else picked it up. For what purpose is now rather obvious? The only thing obvious about all this, Mamselle, is the identity of the guilty party. Uh, suppose we let the Newfoundland authorities decide about that, Professor. But while she is free, all our lives are in danger. They won't be for long. The weather's starting to clear now. Another hour and we'll wind up this little affair in the town of Gander. <laughs> Read you loud and clear, Chief. Glad to hear you got to Gander all right. Sure. That army jet got me here in plenty of time. But what's been holding you up? According to our plan, I expected you here hours ago. Had a little trouble, Chief. Ice. Murder. What? Auto land in about 30 minutes now. Have a private office ready for us. I'll tell you all about it then. the office, Ken. You want everybody in to talk things over? It'll be simpler that way, Chief. Will you all step inside, please? Certainly. Glad to oblige, this. I am sorry, monsieur, but I cannot say the same. All this officiousness, this delay, it's inexcusable. Why should you object, Professor Gomar? After all, I am the one who is suspect at the moment. Come along. Yes, very well. Very well. You uh, want to take over, Ken? If you don't mind, Chief, it won't take long. You all know, well, you know by now why we're here. One of you suspected of espionage, of having stolen top secret microfilm. Microfilm of Formula H. Oh, then Gomar's guess was right, Thurston. If it was a guess, Sir John. I told you, I but drew a natural conclusion, monsieur. So you did. And Dr. Najda told us she was innocent of the pilot's murder. Now, I'm wondering what Sir John has to say. What I have to say? What about, Mr. Thurston? About your stomach pills, your wristwatch. What? A poison pellet can easily be disguised as an innocent pill. And I'm curious as to why a man who's wearing a watch is always asking the time. <laughs> I don't know what you're driving at, Thurston. 
Is there anything unusual about a man's watch stopping? Not unless there's a microfilm concealed in the case that's caused it to stop. Microfilm? Ken. I told you I'd wind things up in Gander, Chief. You better take him away. <laughs> Well, I guess we put the wraps on this one all right, eh, Mr. X? I knew all the time it was that Sir John Saunders joker. Oh, sure. Sure, it was as plain as my nose. Hey, hey, what are we stopping at the aeroplane garage for? Our plane was put inside for repairs. What? But I thought Professor Gomar and that Ali Najda were taking off for Paris in a little while. They are. We have to switch planes for them. The de-icers on this one don't work. Remember? Oh, oh sure, sure, sure. dark in here, Mr. X. Why don't we turn on light or something? It's light enough for our purpose. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's... Uh... Hey, what is our purpose anyway? Keep quiet and I'll show you. But, 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 Mr. X... Quiet. Oh, but we've, we've come to the end of this place. There's no plane in here. The hangar's divided into two sections. It's in the next one. Through this door. There it is, Bagel. Mr. X, look. Yeah. But what's going on there with that plate? The plate covering the alcohol tank being removed. What alcohol tank? The one used to fuel the de-icers. Hey, <laughs> where's the alcohol? That's why the de-icers didn't work. There's something else being taken out of that tank. You see Mr. Rex, that's, that's the... Yeah. I'll take that if you don't mind, Aline. Susan. The microfilm. Aline. But, but it was so John. That is... Well, I thought you... Oh. So it was a trap. That's right. We had to get proof. So Sir John played along with us. You had to feel safe enough to walk into it. I see. But, but the microfilm on the tank. How'd you know about that? It figured, Pega. She had to get it out of the country some way. The pilot was working with her. And the de-icers didn't work. You know you're not going to walk out of here alive, don't you, Mr. Thurston? Mr. X... Oh, put that thing away. The chief's got to hang us around it. You're all through. So. For the time being, I have lost. You lost a long time ago, Aileen. When you decided you, you'd try to help destroy the world. Well, someday we'll find a remedy for what's wrong with you and a lot of people like you. We've got to find it. Let's pray that it's short of war. And now, here's our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lucille Meredith, Will Wright, Daniel Hurley, Howard McNair... And Stacy Harris. Next week, well, who would dream that the icy slopes of the Matterhorn would hold the key to one of the most disruptive forces at work in the world today? And no, no, I, I don't mean Leon Belasco, but he'll be along on the trip to Switzerland as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return? As the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.